Hello, and welcome to the Demi Plane of Gaming. I am your host, Stephen D. Russell. I am here, of course, with my co-host, Owen K.C. Stevens, and we are here with... Well, we were here with Brian from Reaper. <laughs> up, up until a second ago, we up were until here. Us, till us, till a very absolute second ago. Um, so we'll be we'll have Brian back here, here short, shortly when he pops back on. Um, we're here to talk a little bit about Reaper's miniatures, but since we've just lost Reaper miniatures, we're going to talk about Owen's new job. <laughs> <laughs> so Owen this week got to make a. a uh, very nice announcement, and I want to congratulate Owens. This is the first time I've got to uh, congratulate him face to face, the emails and so forth. Um, so I want to congratulate him on becoming the Pathfinder to developer for one of my favorite gaming companies, Green Ronin. So, Owen, could you tell us a little bit about the craziness of working for a, yet another gaming company? Yeah, so um, obviously my work with uh, my relationship with Green Ronin goes back quite a ways. Uh, Chris Pramus was at Wizards of the Coast when I was at Wizards of the Coast back in 2000-2001. Uh, we both ended up leaving Wizards of the Coast under various circumstances not long after that, and I was making a run as a full-time freelance writer uh, during the, the Wild West days of the Open Gaming License, and I did a lot of work for Green Ronin. Uh, so Green Ronin used to do a lot of uh, OGL D&D compatible stuff, um, but they also did a lot of their own developed game systems, uh, including the Instant Masterminds, and then since then they've done uh, Song of Ice and Fire, and they've done Dragon Age. So they've got a lot of support that has moved away from from most of the stuff I did with them, although I did work on uh, Song of Ice and Fire. Um, but Pathfinder is very, very strong at the moment, and there have been a lot of people that have been talking to Greg Ronin saying, hey, how about you take some of that old... 3.5 material and update it for Pathfinder. Well, advanced BCR. Oh, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll sorry, get to that. That's, that's part of sorry. this conversation. <laughs> um, so, to see what the interest level was, uh, Green Running ran a Kickstarter for a large, revised, expanded Freeport book uh, designed primarily as a Pathfinder book. And I was asked if I would come on and do uh, a chunk of the player's guide for that, which I was happy to do. It was fun to work with them again. Since that time, they have, as a company, decided that there are some other Pathfinder projects they'd like to undertake. Uh, the one that has already been announced is, in fact, a update of the Advanced Bestiary, which is a very popular book. Uh, it came out at the same time they did uh, the Advanced Game Master's Guide, and I wrote that, and the Advanced uh, Player's Manual. But the Advanced Bestiary is the one that gets the most used by other people, and it's been used a lot, for example, by Paizo in various projects. So... Uh, the plan is to have me uh, currently oversee the Freeport stuff, which is being produced as we speak, uh, and then I will be moving on to Advanced Bestiary, and then there's a lot of other stuff we can do. Uh, there's a lot of, of stuff that can be updated and expanded. Uh, I've made various suggestions to Chris, and that's being discussed. Um, and then there's a, a good reason to think that we will do some new projects as well, um, although they may well tie into existing things. So the only thing that we are currently uh, publicly talking about is the Freeport Pathfinder book and the Advanced Bestiary, but the plan is to have more beyond that. Um, this is a part-time gig, right? I'm not writing all this stuff from scratch. I'm overseeing it. I'm, I'm the developer. I'll, I'll be contacting people and getting the freelancers we need and making sure there's a consistent voice and keeping, a, a, in general, a, a Pathfinder kind of eye on it because there are a lot of great designers that just aren't as familiar with the exact way that Pathfinder handles certain questions as opposed to the way 4th edition handles it or 3.5 or 3.0 or, or any other game system. Uh, and I've got a lot of experience with that. That looks like we might have Brian back. Okay, well, Brian, if you can hear us, jump in. Right now we're just seeing a, a little symbol in his head. Um, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not moving up to Seattle, at least at the moment, although I love the town. I might move later. Um, and I'm not giving up any of my other projects as a result of this. Chris is, and Chris was running Green Ernie back when he worked at Wizards of the Coast. He's, he's not a fan of trying to do non-compete agreements or locking people down or saying if you work yeah, for me... You're you not exclusive with Green Ernie. Uh, yeah, I am not exclusive with Green Ernie. You back with us, Brian? Hello, Brian. Hello. 
I can hear you again, which is the first time I've been able to hear you since you started. All right, excellent. I'm glad we can hear you. Okay. So I want to welcome Brian to the uh, Demi Plane of Gaming today. And Hi, uh, Brian, if if you could tell us about this. Okay, folks, now so the entire see. Southwest is having connectivity, yeah, the entire Southwest appears to be having connectivity issues today, I've, I've heard from people in a lot of places in Texas and Oklahoma and out in uh, Kansas um, and a little to the western east of us, so this, this may be very spotty. Brian, can you hear me at all? Yes, I can hear you on. Okay. Brian, why don't you just hop in and tell us a little bit about the Bones 2 Kickstarter that uh, Reaper is doing. Sure. Um, I started a, a project uh, about two weeks ago um, to do more Bones miniatures. Basically, last summer, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, we launched uh, our Bones 1 Kickstarter, uh, which raised $3.4 million on Kickstarter, uh, making it, at the time it closed, the third highest funded Kickstarter of all time. It's now been pushed back to fifth since then, uh, but it's still a pretty impressive feat. And what we basically wanted to do was create these plastic models. Uh, the mold for a plastic miniature can cost upwards of $20,000, so it's not something we make a, a new mold of just because we can. Um, so we basically said, hey guys, we want to make these really cool minis, and if you will help us raise the money, um, every time we make another increment of 20000 and 100000 and whatever, we'll make even more minis. And uh, by the time it was over, you were getting over 200 miniatures for 100 bucks, and there were another 100 or so miniatures that you could choose to pay an extra 10 or $15 for, that kind of thing. Um, it was extremely popular. We had a little over 18,000 backers by the time it was said and done. And uh, we grew the Bones miniature line by over 200 models. Um, and that's really cool, and we are really excited about it. I said, you know what, we would like to do that again. Our goal right now is to get the Bones lined up to about 500 minis. Uh, we've been at it for about two weeks, and we look at my computer behind me. We're not quite at $2 million right now. We still have eight days to go. Um, you know, we don't know where it's going to end. We're, we're happy right now if it were to end that. Uh, that's a lot of minis. There's 150 new miniatures already um, in the core set and another 50 miniatures in the add-ons. So we were already at 200 miniatures where we were last time. Um, and we were just able to do so much cool stuff. I think what's most important about this is it's not... Deal you know, it's great. And I totally want everybody to come on and find at least one thing in this project that they would like to tackle. But what's really cool about it is that everything we make in this project is going to be available for sale. So even if you go, yeah, you don't know, like that, but I don't know, Kickstarter, I'm do it, it will be available for retail sale later. And uh, that's that's a major selling point for us because we want people to know this isn't something that we're just doing as a cash grab. We're doing this to create a product line that we want to have uh, a shelf life of forever. We can always get these things. So how long does a, a mold for a plastic injection figure last? How many how many figures can run through it before you need to, to pay it, pony up for another mold? Oh, um, tens of thousands of impressions, really. Um, the vinyl that we use is not particularly cool on a mold. Um, as long as the cooling... Uh, the molds have, like, cooling tubes built in, and that's, that's one of the reasons why they're so expensive. Um, so as long as the cooling tubes are connected properly and the machine is well maintained, the mold will last for several years. Um, by the time... Well, and we have lost Brian. We have lost Brian, sadly, again, and we apologize for the heavy connectivity issues we're having today. Uh, I'm sorry, Steve, I can't hear you. Down. Uh, talk more about Green Ronin. Okay, talk more about Green Ronin. I heard that. Um, so... We don't know yet uh, what all we're going to be doing, and I'm very excited to be to be part of the team. And I know, you know, my, my directive from Chris is to is to do my part in helping them make cool stuff. Um, so there's a lot of things I would like to see updated. Obviously, a bunch of people are already asking me, you know, are we going to see Baptism of the Bloodlines updated? Are we going to see 
the Holy and the Holy Warrior books updated? Are we going to see uh, some of the 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 Drow book, the Plot and Poison, and, and all those things updated? And and, and the answer to or this Psionics Handbook, whatever, Hamanatra. The answer to all of those right now is maybe. Uh, nothing is off the table in that regard. Um, we'll just have to see how it goes. The second question I'm asked more often, most often, is uh, how is this going to impact Super Genius Games and Demi Plane of Gaming? Um, obviously, I'm still going to be doing Demi Plane of, Demi Plane of Gaming. Here I am. Uh, hopefully, the connectivity issue should not be in any way related to me now being a, a member of the community. Um, <laughs> I, I don't see how there could be any connection whatsoever, and, and if there is, we'll fix it. Um, yes. Super Genius, uh, as I was saying, Chris Bramish has no problems with me continuing Super Genius and continuing to freelance for other people, right? I mean, I'm, I, I just turned over stuff to Lewis Porter Jr. Uh, design games last night. Uh, I've, I've got stuff that went to Deep Magic from Open Design. Uh, I'm still doing freelance for Paizo periodically. Uh, I, I intend to still be very involved in a lot of different places in the industry. That is not to say that nothing could ever change. Um, you know, you look at your career and you look like what's going on and, and you look at, at business plans and you have to ask yourself, where do I want to be spending most of my time? Um, there is going to be a fair amount of work with Green Rune, and that means that, that time has to come from somewhere. As of yet, it has not affected my ability to do the things that I've, I've already committed to doing, but going forward when I'm making new commitments and looking at my new plans, I will have to consider... Do I want to be part of this Kickstarter? Or do I want to, to take on that freelance project? And it is not inconceivable that I would say, you know, what I'm doing now and what Super Genius are doing are, are not as closely connected as they have in the past. That's not the current plan, but, you know, we're looking at these things all the time. Uh, Super Genius Games is right now going over our business plans, so I'm, I'm actually bizarrely not in a position to say I, I'm absolutely not changing anything because things could change in the next few weeks just as we go over what our plans are. But... None of that will be because Green Ronin requires it. I have so chosen to take this job, so I take that very, very seriously. Where that's going to impact my time will be on the things that I'm not already committed to, which are, are my my open design, and that not open design, where I personally have free time to design, and uh, I will have to decide. But yeah, I know it's, it's like Warrior, right? Warrior's a terrible name for class in, in the book. You see there are three warriors on the hill. <laughs> oh, they're warriors. Well, that's not... No, no, I mean, you know, they're fighters. Know. Oh, they're fighters. No, 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 look, there are three guys in sword. Oh, swordsmen! Oh, you know, it's... it's. <clears throat> so I, 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 shouldn't, I shouldn't say... I think Monty Cook at one, at, at, at one point on his blog specifically said that he, if he had to go back, he would rename some of the classes that were one word and make yeah. them all two words so that it wouldn't be... And I've tried to do that, you know, combining two words to make a class, and you, I've seen you do that as well, but, you know... So well, and it, even there it's you can one get, of those things where you can get in trouble sometimes. Uh, we we have a death mage, and I've had people say, "So do you mean their own class, death mage, or is this a death themed like wizard?" So some confusion is inevitable. But looks like we might have Brian back. Brian, can you hear us? Not yet. Well, last time to be <laughs> yeah, I'm not hearing anybody right now. So, welcome to the most broken up demi plane of gaming. We appear to have suffered some sort of player shift. Hello? Wow. This ain't television, folks. Yeah, this is just so you know, Steve, was, you sound the, like Hal um, laughing himself to death, the computer from 2001. It's the bottom of a tin well, as far as I can tell. Oh,
Not at all. Not. So in case on the final recording, anything I'm saying is getting recorded, uh, I will just go on talking about freelancing. Uh, there are a bunch of projects that I need to do updates on. Uh, the Dungeon Today Day Kickstarter Rewards is one of them, and uh, we should... A draft of the player's guide has gone out already, and uh, a more updated version should be out later this week. Um, and that pretty much leaves Pathfinderization, uh, which we've done a lot of work on, but still isn't complete, and the new level, which we have a map of, but not all of the, the encounters up. Um, I don't know if that will all be done by the end of this year, but it will certainly all be done before either uh, I am hosting another Kickstarter uh, for Super Genius, or before uh, we allow subscriptions to lapse. Um, unless there's some dramatic change in our ability to do so, which I, there shouldn't be, but as I said, we're, we're going through business plans as such now. Um, and World of the Apocalypse, which we have carefully never announced a date for, because we always knew that we had a lot of stuff to do, and there's a lot of us, other stuff going on at the same time. Um, once the Dungeon Day stuff is off my plate, World of the Apocalypse will be my biggest long-term project that I will be mostly working on for Super Genius. Uh, although I do not intend to allow work on that to impact with, with free learning. I don't intend to let anyone, anything, impact my work with free learning. So. Can either of you hear me? Right, I got a noise that sounded like a computer trying to do cats spitting. Steve, it looks to me like we need to just sort of call this and maybe put it up as a as a, an example of what can go wrong, and we've lost Brian. <laughs> Um, can't hear a word. So three strings walk into a bar. They go to the bartender and they say, hey, can we have a drink? The bartender says, no, you can't have a drink. You're a string. I don't serve strings. Well, the strings sort of get depressed and they, they, they slink out of the bar. They're standing around. And there are only a couple of bars in town and one of the three strings says, well, the first string won't go to this bar. That doesn't work. So let me try the second bar and let me try something. So he's he slicks down all his loose ends, and he ties himself up real tight, and he makes sure he's pointy at both ends, and he slides in all smooth to the second bar. And he says there at the bar, ooh, give me a drink. The bartender looks down on him and says, hey, aren't you a string? Ooh, string hangs his head. Yeah, I'm a string. Okay, well, we don't serve strings. You're going to have to go somewhere else. So the second string leaves. The third string looks at his two friends, and he says, well, we've got one more shot at this. There's one more bar in town. Let me see what I can do. And he frays himself up at both ends, and he twists himself up a bunch, and he makes a bunch of loops and goes through himself and tightens it all up. So he's got a whole bunch of gnarly, wrapped-up bits, and he's all fluffy and loose and badly loosened up at both ends and barely looks like he's, he's a single, continuous anything. They kind of got a lumbly blobbing into the next bar, and he, he comes up to the uh, bartender and says, Ooh, give me a drink. The bartender says, Hey, aren't you a string? No, I'm afraid not. Oh, at <laughs> Wow! Now I can't even see Steve. And there's the 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 sound of tin in the background. So I don't know what we're doing here. I've improv. 